It's Epitz Evan from PhotoExtremist.com and in this video I want to tell you how you can make multiple exposure images with your DSLR with the multiple exposure function or uh, with Photoshop. Not all DSLRs have the multiple exposure function although I think all the high end, higher end Nikon cameras do and some of the Canon cameras do as well. So I'll leave a link down below in the description for all that information but in any case what is a multiple exposure? All it is is where you take one picture and you take another picture right on top of it and it blends the two photos together and it actually gets brighter. So the one I want to show you how to make is this one. How did I make this? Did I use Photoshop? I did not use Photoshop at all except to adjust the color. How do you do that with only your camera? What you got to do is go into the menu system and then click the thing that says multiple exposure. You'll find it, look in your instruction manual. Um, you want to turn auto gain off uh, because you want to make the pictures brighter as you go on. If you, if you had auto gain on, it would try to automatically zero out the exposure value, which you don't want to do. So leave auto gain off for this particular example. You want number of shots too, although you can do more if you want to. Click multiple exposure mode and then click on series and then you can go around take one picture and then take another picture and then it'll take those two pictures squish them on top of one another and then you are good to go. Alright so the sneaky secret to get the high key multiple exposure uh, nature self portrait photos to look really good is to first put your camera into spot metering mode then put your camera into aperture priority mode so you can select whatever f number you you want to use put the focus point in the center and then take a picture of yourself now if you take the picture correctly and if you take it so the sky is against the background you should see the blinky lights when you push the up arrow on your Nikon SLR and those blinking lights show up that is good all those are indicating is that the background is maxed out white. Even if it's not maxed out white, but it's still pretty close, it'll probably be fine. So now you've got the first shot uh, like that. Next, you want to bump up the exposure compensation about two stops so that when you aim it up at the tree, it blows out the background completely because tree branches are not as solid as a face. I will be right back one second. All right, I am back. Um, here's my result I got. I just took that literally a few seconds from now. As you can see, it's not the best thing, but it does give you the example of what I'm talking about. You just need to make sure that the first photo you take of your face, spot metering, zero EV. Second photo, about plus two EV. All situations are different, so you will have to experiment. But the key is just to get the background blown out white and then you're good to go. It is very hit and miss. You will probably be taking uh, dozens if not hundreds of photos to get one good one. You can plan out the shots though. It's not like it's all completely hit and miss. You can plan them out and you can get um, consistent good results if you know what you're doing. Now messing around with the EV only applies to the high key portraits. If you're not wanting to do the high key portraits then don't worry about the EV, don't worry about the spot metering or any of that. Just take the pictures as you would. If you just want to take photos that you've already taken and you, you don't want to use the multiple exposure feature in your camera, but you want to do them inside of Photoshop, I'm going to tell you how to do that right now as well. So let's go on the computer and check that out. All right, so when you're in Photoshop, you're going to want to grab your two photos. Now, what I do is drag one over to the left-hand side of this toolbar and then I drop it and it will create a new document up at the top there. Next, you're going to want to grab another photo and drag it on top of the actual uh, canvas itself. And then drop it and you'll be a little X there. And then you can resize it if you want to. And then just push enter to get rid of that X. Next, all you got to do is now that there's two layers down here at the bottom, click this thing that says normal and then select screen. And then you are done. That's all you got to do. So, uh, there are other ones uh, I've created just with this one picture alone. Um, you can do it with the city. You can 
do it with whatever you want. So that's the beauty of doing it in Photoshop. You can select any sort of photo you've already taken and mix and match, remix, etc. It always looks better in black and white in my opinion, although you can still do stuff with color, of course, and it will always be consistent just like that. Um, here's another example I took. I blew out the background to make it totally white and I had the, in the interior of my head to be kind of dark and then I put another photo over it. This one was just grass <clears throat> and then I just did that. So the blown out background basically acts as a layer mask and it does the job for you. So it's pretty nice, pretty cool. If you want to see more of my stuff, check out photoextremists.com and sign up on the email list. I'll be sending you uh, free ebooks with tons of information about how to use a DSLR and how to take cool tricks just like this one. Also, check out my ebook that I have up for sale called Trick Photography and Special Effects. If you're wanting to get more creative with your DSLR, that ebook is probably the best thing um, that there is out there, and it's, it also comes with nine hours of video content. So be sure to check that out, and I will see you in the next video.